analyzing this particular study, we have to do a couple of things. One is we need to pick artifact minutes and take them out of what we're going to analyze. And the other is we then need to select the minutes that the EGG machine will then use for its analysis. Now, most of the time, you'll see in this box here, have been pre-selected by the algorithm built into the EGG software. And so it's telling us that minutes 1 to 1.5, 4.5 to 5, and 4.5 to 5 are, are artifactual. In fact, if you, if you look here, you can see that we go above the scale here, which is why these minutes were noted to be artifactual. Now, in order to pick the proper number of minutes, you must pick a total of four contiguous minutes. So the machine has already indicated the good minutes here are minutes 5 through 10. If I want to accept those, I can just leave the box already checked as accept. Or if I wanted to reject those minutes, I can check the reject box, in which case it will give me the option to self-select any minutes that I like. Now, remember I had said that you need to pick four contiguous minutes out of every 10-minute segment. What happens if I choose not to do that? So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to leave the 10 where it is. And I'm just going to go ahead and change this 5 to a 7, which would give me 7 minutes. And I'm going to say, accept these changes. And I'm going to be warned by the software that I must pick at least 4 minutes. So at any time, what's built into the software is you will be warned if there's a problem. So we're going to get rid of this. I will go back and check my accept box instead and just accept what the device has decided is good minutes. And I can now then go up here to my running spectral analysis. And for this 10 minute period, if I wanted to see what that looked like, it would show me that at the three cycle per minute mark, I have a dominant pattern with a little bit here at six and very little down here over in the Brady rhythm. Um, now, I'm going to go over here and go back to the next 10 minute period. So we're going to analyze each 10 minute period at a time. And I first take a look in my artifact box. It tells me that I have no artifacts. And so I will go ahead and just accept that 10 minute period. And again, if I want to, I can go and look at my RSA and it will show me, again, I had my predominant three cycle per minute activity. Now I'm starting to see a little bit of bradygastria in addition to this. And these two black lines on the running spectral analysis, this indicates the five minute period during which time the technician had the patient water load. That's as much water as they can comfortably drink within a five minute period of time. I'll go back to my next 10 minute period. Again, looking at the signal, I see a good, strong three cycle per minute signal. I'm going to look at my artifact box and I see nothing written. So I have no artifacts according to the machine calculation. And I will select all 10 minutes again. And then go ahead and move to my last 10 minute period. In which case I see once again, no artifacts have been selected by the software and so I can select the 10 good minutes that were suggested. Again, at any time, you can decide not to do that by simply clicking Reject and selecting minutes manually yourself. Now, once we have saved all of the good minutes, another way that you can determine that you've actually analyzed all of these is you can go to View or Analyze here at the top bar, and you'll see a check mark next to each 10-minute period that was analyzed that you've taken care of. Again, extra steps, not necessary. We look again at the running spectral analysis. And then the next thing is we're going to look at the summary graphs. Now, the RSA is the running spectral analysis. The summary graphs is demarcated by this blue and red depiction. And it will say summary graphs. And what this will give me, it's going to give me three summary graphs based upon isolated frequencies. So the brady gastria frequency of 1 to 2.5 is in this box. The tachy frequency, 3.75 to 10, is here. Duodenal respiratory is 10 to 15. And then normal, 3 cycle per minute activity, is 2.5 to 3.75. You will notice that there are a series of broken red lines. And what these broken red lines represent 
are the upper and lower limit of normal based upon 30 to 40 population-based normals who had multiple EGGs done on separate days. And that's the beauty of this software is that your patient serves as his own control, but then that is compared to population-based normals. When we look at this study, the thing that's remarkable and the most important thing that I look at first is the three cycle per minute or normal box. Why is that? That's because the studies have shown, biopsy studies have shown, that normal three cycle per minute activity that is within these broken lines is indicative of adequate numbers of ICCs or interstitial cells of call of a minimum of five per high power field, which means that the conduction apparatus between the nerve cells and the muscle cells is intact. So that's very important. But what we see in this particular study is we have above normal levels following the water load and even at baseline. And this is very, very suggestive of functional outlet obstruction. That is my presumptive diagnosis. Uh, the next step after you've analyzed the study, because you're finished analyzing, is we're going to go over here to the DX button, which is the suggested diagnosis based upon algorithms. And when you click on that, you're going to see the suggested diagnosis of probable normal gastric rhythm. And that's because the dominant frequency is all within the three cycle per minute box. However, we know because it's abnormally high, which we would call hypernormal GMA or gastric myoelectric activity, that this is suggestive of functional outlet obstruction. Now, you can decide to keep this diagnosis by clicking accept and then OK. You can reject it, in which case you will need to completely write whatever the diagnosis is. Or frequently what I will do is click on modify add. Now what this gives me access to are a series of suggested phrases that you can add to the report. And these are phrases that you can create or change yourself. Then if we want to include an ICD-9 code, Similarly, we can drop down this box and you can search through the different ICD-9 codes. And these come included with the system. So I'm going to pick pyloric outlet obstruction. And these are the current ICD-10s. These are ICD-9s from the previous ICD-9 period of time. And I can add that to the report also. And then I will click OK. Now, what am I going to see on my report before I move on to actual recommendations? So if you click on report and then view report, this is an example of what we call the core report. This is the uh, single page report that consists of the basics of what's seen during the EGG. And you'll see under diagnosis, what I had selected is there is present. It also includes the findings in the summary graphs, as well as the running spectral analysis and an actual analysis of the percent dominant frequency. Now, if we go back, we're going to complete the report by putting in our recommendations. I already have placed in my own recommendations, and again, this is configurable to the user, and I will pick outlet obstruction dilate, add this to the report, and click OK. And you'll see it now appears in the report. At this point, the report is complete, and you're able to save it. If at any time the report is incomplete, it will not allow you to save the report until you complete the report. So we'll go up here, we'll click on Save, and then at that point, you can click on Print Report, and it will allow you to print the report. Any of these, of course, can be changed at any time once the report is saved. Now, in this particular patient, as I had mentioned, she had functional outlet obstruction at the level of her pylorus. And so she is someone that we had recommended to go ahead and have a pyloric dilation. And the beauty of the electrogastrogram is we can then subsequently document that this has been effective in terms of therapy. So I'm just going to reduce that one. And I want to show you a subsequent study. And this is the same patient. However, 
She has had a functional outlet obstruction dilation with a pyloric balloon endoscopically. And again, we're now at the baseline period. Here are the 10 minutes. You can see the artifactual minutes. And I want to show this to you because the artifactual minutes selected are more than the number of good minutes. So sometimes this may happen, and you may have to make a visual decision on how many of the minutes you would like to keep based upon what you see. Now typically what I will do is I will look at the report and look for artifacts seen here, perhaps, at the uh, respiratory sensor side where you could see it goes off scale. So I'm, and you, you, we can't splice minutes, so I could pick minutes 0 to 4 or I could pick minutes 5 to 10. And in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick minutes 5 to 10. So I'm going to reject this. I will change this so I'm picking minutes 5 to 10. Again, always you must pick a minimum of 4. And we'll go ahead and accept these changes. Step through to the next period. I see no artifact selected. I'll accept all 10 minutes. We move to the next period. And once again, we see a small amount of artifact noted here, beginning at 29.5 to 30. So I'm going to go in and um, I don't like to pick half minutes. I like to keep them as whole numbers. So I will reject this and change this to 29 as opposed to 29.5 and accept that. And then we will go to the final third minute period. And the good minutes suggested are 30 to 39.5. That's going to be 34 to 39.5. And you can see a very nice regular signal here. This is off scale, very irregular. And I'm going to go ahead and pick the minutes from 34 to 39. Again, I tend not to like to pick half minutes. So I will reject this pick minutes 34 and you can either click this up to 34 or just click it once and then type in the number yourself. And once that is done I'm going to accept these changes and then move here and look at my running spectral analysis. Now you'll notice this looks quite different than the original study. She originally had a lot of very strong three and here we really don't see that any longer. This, in fact, looks much more normal. And when we look at our summary graphs, we see that after the balloon dilation, instead of the obstructive changes, that the three cycle per minute activity has all fallen within the population-based norm drawings, as well as bradygastria and tachygastria. So we're actually able to fix her symptoms as well as fixing the functional outlet obstruction. In the event that um, you want to review a SAVE study or you would like to look at a study that you haven't yet seen, but the program is closed. All you need to do is go to the icon on the desktop and double click the icon. You click OK and then as with most standard programs, um, you can either go to the icon for open prior study or you can click file and then ask it to open the prior study. This will then provide you with a dialog box that contains all of the studies that have been performed at your institution. All you need to do is select any one of these, or either double click or select OK, and you'll be taken to the first 10 minute period or pre water load baseline. Again, you can decide to pick minutes based upon the artifact that's seen here and I'm going to pick minutes 1 through 9, accept that, move to the next period, and you can see it's very quick to be able to select these minutes. 12.5, uh, again my predilection is to never select half minutes and so I'm going to make this 13, which is what the machine is recommending. That's not artifact, we'll accept that. Again, step through to the next, no artifact noted, we'll pick those minutes and then move to the final period of time. Again, no artifact noted except those minutes. And then uh, take a look at the running spectral analysis, followed by our view of the summary graphs. Once again, you can see here that in the post water load period, a very high three cycle per minute activity 
indicative, again, of functional outlet obstruction in this particular patient. We see this in approximately 25% of patients with gastroparesis. Once the study has been analyzed, you can review your report and make any changes that you find necessary. Other material that you may find in the study that you can edit includes patient medications or the patient diagnostic history or demographics. Typically, this information has already been done by the technician or the nurse performing the study, but in case there's an error that you see, so for instance, we can go to pre-study information, and this will provide you with a checklist where you can select any of the particular symptoms or manually enter any additional indication material. Already they have placed the name of the attending physician, the referring physician, and who the technician is who performed the study. Another important thing to take a look at is also the um, amount of water ingested. And, and this is important because uh, we know that a normal amount of water is approximately um, of 600 cc's worth of water, or about 16 ounces. And if you find a patient who can only drink, let's say, two or three ounces, or only two or 300 cc's of water, um, you know that there may be an accommodation issue with this patient in addition to any other gastric motility disturbance.